We're continuing in our interview series where we find out more about the people behind You Multicultural. Today we'll be talking with Yulia Kovalenko. Let's get into it. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Yulia. Thank you, Ryan, for having me. You are one of our uh, civic journalists. What exactly do you do? First, I was hired as Ukrainian-speaking journalist, and it was very exciting for me, but nervous at the same time, because I realized how many responsibility I have to the Ukrainian community and to the EU multicultural organization, because I'm representative of their organization. But the longer I live in Winnipeg in Canada, I feel that I'm not interested only in events that happen in, in Ukrainian community, but also local issues mm-hmm. and events. So now I bring people from different communities and nationalities to the studio, and we discuss the topics that are important mm-hmm. to our cities, and we talk about how we can make life in Winnipeg better for all communities and healthier. I just have to say, I'm really impressed with like your intros and like how you edit the videos you have a great eye for composition and editing and it's always so fun when uploading the videos seeing your interactions with the camera and talking about the events i just think it's so cool oh thanks (laughs) how'd you get into journalism in the first places did you go to school for it yeah i'm a third year student at kiev national university of culture and art and i'm getting my bachelor degree in journalism Uh, So I can't say that I always wanted to be a reporter or and make news. I just always loved uh, producing the video content. Mm -hmm. First, it started at the age of 12 when me and my friends started a YouTube channel. Classic. And (laughs) yes, once I sat down in the camera, I just loved that feeling to be on the camera and talk Mm -hmm. to people. And every time I wanted to improve my content, make it high quality and that's how I'm involved. Yeah, always improving in the craft, trying to figure out better ways to tell stories, interacting with the community. It's always a lot of fun and just the whole YouTube thing, it's such a classic like, yep, I really wanted to do this, start a YouTube channel, now I'm sort of working in the media field. So that's really cool and exciting. Yeah, I always see how many mistakes I made and there are a lot of competitors on YouTube. There are a lot of different bloggers, so you Mm -hmm. have to be you have to produce really high quality and engaging content if you want to stay on and the leading finding age. the right trends yes. and everything. So that's why I always try to improve my content. Third year in Kiev University. Kiev? Kiev? How do I? How do you even say it properly? <laughs> Kiev. 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 Okay, I'm, I'm just butchering it over <laughs> and over again. But anyways, you're going to university, so it's all online currently, right? Yes, now I do have online classes, but to be honest, I miss all my classes because of the difference of the time. Yeah. I, love, I love sleeping. <laughs> I mean, it makes it also hard to do online classes, like with COVID and everything and opportunities provided by, from you Multicultural, I was able to take some courses and it's just completely different than being in the classroom. Yeah, and I just lose connection with my classmates and with my teachers, but they are supporting me that they see my results and that I am in mm-hmm. Canada, they see all my video, they follow me on social media and like, wow, Yuli, you're doing a great mm-hmm. job. So what brought you to Canada? Yeah, when the war started, I moved to Poland after five days of living in the basement. When Canada launched a special mm-hmm. program for Ukrainians, I applied right away because I didn't speak Polish and I couldn't find any job in Poland. And I just was like, crying all the time. Yeah, out. it's not going to work out. And I just decided to move. It, it was a good way to start to build new life from scratch. Mm-hmm. I guess just what are your like feelings and thoughts as you're seeing the news come out? Of course, it's very hard. And uh, I think people in Ukraine, they get used to sirens and they don't even go to the bomb shelters. But I remember the Ukraine the way when I left Ukraine. So I still remember the empty streets and only tanks. Uh, All the tanks kind of drive yes, around. Yes, yeah, drives around. And uh, I still remember this sounds of the sirens and when i read the news um i it's always hard for me to concentrate on my work but at the same time my work and editing it's kind of meditation for me mm-hmm. i just can abstract of all the things abstract gives you a moment yeah. to kind of just 
not think about what's going on in the world and just like, all right, let me just get in the work. A little mm-hmm. bit of a meditative, exactly. a yeah. Zen moment. At times. <laughs> yeah, it's it's unfortunate that when the news came out, it's like, oh God, what? Like, what's to gain from this except just blood and loss of life? Nobody knows the answer. Nobody knows. I know that people and the city, some cities coming back to the daily life, like mm-hmm. restaurants opening, people start to work, but I think nobody can be 100% safe when rockets flying in the sky. You always have sky. something in the back of your yeah. mind. I think that just kind of proves human resiliency, that even in the most intense situations, we can... Maybe that's also bad, but we can normalize the situation at times when things are just completely chaotic and, and falling apart. We're like, yeah, you know what? I'll just go mm-hmm. to work, do, do my thing. Love and just words of everything to the Ukrainian mm-hmm. people that they're able to retain their lands and you know find some hope at the end of this. For sure, Ukraine will win. <laughs> yes. 100%. <laughs> you come here and you start working with you multicultural to tell Ukrainian stories at first. And, you know, there was that responsibility as you're a representative of both communities at time. Why do you think it's important to tell? I mean, ob- I mean, it's probably an obvious answer, <laughs> but I'm going to ask it anyways. Why do you think it's important to highlight the stories of the Ukrainian diaspora here in Canada and Winnipeg. I think everyone knows that Ukraine is very Ukrainian community is very strong and powerful community and we do our best to preserve our culture and identity. So I think media is one of the most important factors that can help to implement this. Mm-hmm. So it's really I just feel that it is connected people because um like old immigrants, they have an outdated vision of Ukrainian culture, mm-hmm. and newcomers, they have this new vision. They um, bring some peace from Ukraine modern culture, and I think my goal is to connect all this and to bring different opinions and uh, different people to my new stru- perspective, yeah, to my perspective, and connect them. It's really unique because Winnipeg never had before Ukrainian-speaking journalists, and a lot of people didn't understand who I am and what I'm doing. But now, like, what's going on here? <laughs> Who's this? Yes, uh, but now I feel that like I have to produce high-quality content and interesting to all ages to Mm -hmm. our community yeah and i mean it's continuing to expand um we have uh, another person from the community that's starting to produce content right now yeah so i mean Mm -hmm. we just have one episode go out now she seems to be a natural she's an actress okay actress okay She's an actress. Okay, an actress. interesting. Yes. So she went to like acting school and stuff like that or took like, an acting program? Yes, in Ukraine. Oh, cool. So, I mean, she probably came over kind of around the same time as yeah, that's you did. Why, um, yes, yes. That's why she has experience and very confident in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. And she loved doing it. Like she enjoyed it and I love spending time with her and working with her and bringing more people, bringing more guests. Mm-hmm. It's always... A lot of fun. Well, it's a perfect opportunity right now to highlight this content because, you know, we have Ukrainians coming over now. The community is growing. So now they need a voice. Of course. Yeah, I think every community needs a voice. Mm -hmm. And that's perfect that you multicultural has opportunity to bring different cultures, to bring different opinions and grow. Let's say 10 years down the line, where do you where do you see yourself? Oh, <laughs> I know that's the, the challenging question that ever, what am I, your school counselor or something? Where do you see yourself after graduation? <laughs> of course, I have a lot of goals and dreams, but I just hope to continue to do what I love to do, what mm-hmm. I'm enjoying and uh, make positive impact on people's life. Mm-hmm. So that's my goal. Yeah, I mean, that's not a bad dream and a goal to have, telling the stories of others, helping other people out. In terms of content, have you ever thought about like kind of expanding beyond like maybe down the line? Oh, maybe a documentary would be kind of uh, up your alley or is that still kind of a little intimidating? Oh, it's intimidating. (laughs) (laughs) I just love interviewing people and talk to people. 
I need a big production to yeah. uh, do a documentary. Yeah, it can take a lot of work from what I've been hearing and trying to do some other stuff on the side. You're like, oh, no, what sort of uh, monster have I <laughs> tried to unleash here? Yeah, of course, because even when I started, just started uh, Make Reporters, mm -hmm. It was so difficult for me to gather all information, to start to make connection with people. So I need more experience before starting making documentary. <laughs> yeah, just got to take some more ready. time, yes, build up those skills, yes, that yes. sort of thing. So when you came to Canada, for every new immigrant, it's a different experience. But what sort of culture shocks or things did you find when you came over here? Everything. <laughs> everything, yeah. Everything for me was a cultural shock and everything was new for me. Mm -hmm. So, but I think what helped me to adjust to a new society first is my work because I really loved what I'm doing. And uh, the second is my curiosity to learn something new, to get new experience and willing to meet new people and learn from them. So... Of course, I faced a lot of challenges, but I just tried to find something positive in every situation. Mm -hmm. And I would never have had the opportunity to get this experience living in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So I just try to stay positive. Stay positive. <laughs> well, I guess just what, is there any one specific thing that you're like, wow, this was just, I never expected this at all? <laughs> or is there just way too much to yeah, kind of narrow it down? Yeah, way too much, yeah. I will write a post on my social media <laughs> about that. I will write a book about write that. Write a book about it. What did you know about Canada before coming over? Nothing. Nothing? No. We're just this country up in uh, the top of North America. <laughs> yeah, I was just always wanted to live in America and Canada like all girls. I, w I was watching YouTube yeah. a lot and... I just followed all girls who moved to Canada and how they are building their life. Mm -hmm. But it, see, it seemed to me unrealistic and I can't do that. <laughs> okay. It's like too hard. Too hard. Too yeah. hard, too far, too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I guess just what was your experience going through your first winter in Canada? <laughs> I know it's something that, oh, and I mean, this year has been even crazier because this is can't remember the exact date it's like 18 something like it's been almost yeah almost like 200 years since the last time we've had below zero temperatures throughout all of March mm -hmm. yeah when I first moved to Canada and my <clears throat> my friends and my Canadian family started to tell me all the jokes about how Cold, how cold there is in Canada and like uh, about all the stories about two meters of snow and I was like <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> you're pulling my leg that's not real <laughs> yes but when the winter actually comes it's not fun anymore for me and no it is pretty cold and for for everyone who's like lived there their whole lives like myself it is still miserable like, mm -hmm. every winter is another, like, oh, here it comes again, which part of the challenge of adjusting, trying to figure out, okay, winter activities and things. But even when you have activities, you're going out skiing, snowboarding, all that, it still sucks when it's, like, <laughs> minus 30 outside. I agree, yeah. I thought I would die in this <laughs> winter. I don't know. Probably is the worst thing about Canada. It's the worst experience the I ever had in life. <laughs> Actually, I think if I if I'm still alive after winter, I'm ready now for you everything can take on in life. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, it is kind of a, a trial by fire sort of thing moving to Canada. And I mean, Man Manitoba is probably one of the like the prairie provinces are the places that get the coldest. Like if you would have gone on the coast, uh, you know, maybe minus mm -hmm. twenty was the the worst you get. But I mean, then you also have to deal with the it always being wet and rainy all the time at least in the prairie provinces we have a variety of things mm -hmm. we know we have blizzards we have scorching heat we have crazy rain you know sometimes we have some nice weather too <laughs> <laughs> sometimes one month a year <laughs> sometimes i guess just how how are you liking winnipeg because i know sometimes you know people can have a negative idea of what winnipeg is and yes it has some shortcomings but i believe there are some beauty 
mm-hmm. in here. What are your just thoughts and experiences on Winnipeg so far? It's good that I have so many new experiences here and mm-hmm. I met so many great people who helped mm-hmm. me to adjust to a new society. And uh, every day there is something new for me. Mm-hmm. Every day I get new experience. And even if it's hard experience, I just mm-hmm. still learning. So... Um, You're still learning. You're yes. Still learning. Insane. <laughs> well, I guess just some of the things for anyone listening who's new. Winnipeg and just Manitoba in general has some beautiful nature out there, like going out. My favorite thing is to go for like hikes in the woods and forests, going out to the lakes and everything. Beautiful out there. Um, winter, there's a lot of activities. Skating on the river mm-hmm. is always a highlight. Festival de Voyageur, um, as well as uh, before winter, uh, Nuit Blanc is always a fantastic time. Illuminate the night. Tons of The art scene is amazing here in Winnipeg. You just got to know where to find it. Amazing musicians. We have tons of diverse like ethnic foods and things like that here. So there's a lot. And what else? What else? Um, great drag scene. Mm-hmm. as well. If people enjoy drag shows, that sort of thing, there's a ton of really great um, shows and stuff. What's it called? Oh, no. I forgot the name, but just Google drag shows in Winnipeg and you'll be able to find a ton of performers, a ton of, ton of places. Yeah, Winnipeg is one of those, I feel, a gem in the rough. It There's a lot of hardships that go on here. We're struggling right now just in terms of our governments. But... There's great community here, and, you know, with with the right love and dedication from the community, Winnipeg can really be something special. I highly recommend everyone to try this winter. <laughs> try it out. It, if you survive yeah. winter, you can survive Yes, anything. yes. It makes you stronger. Mm-hmm. So, I guess for any newcomers coming in, do you have any advice for them if they're coming and settling here in Winnipeg? Just be open-minded for everything new and be ready to struggle, but... I guess find a community or find, find some Find a community, well. find people who support you, um, find something that you enjoy to do, mm-hmm. and uh, try to find something positive in every day and keep going, never give up. If you have any stories you'd want to share and want to contact Yulia, you can send her an email at y-u-l-i-y-a kovalenko, k-o-v-a-l-e-n-k-o at u-channel.ca. I'm Ryan Funk. This was Utalk. And have yourself a good one.